The King and the Beast. In our last story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to worship the statue Nebuchadnezzar set up and were thrown into the fire as punishment. The flames raged, but they were unharmed. The Lord had protected them, and Nebuchadnezzar awed at the power of their god. In this story, Nebuchadnezzar will come in contact with his inner beast and come to realize the true nature of his relationship with God, inspired by the book of Daniel. Hello, this is Pastor Jack Graham with another episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm really glad that you've joined us today. In our last reading, we heard about how God protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. They refused to bend or to bow to the king's idol, and God used their faithfulness to make his glory known once again to Babylonian's king. In today's reading, we'll learn how Nebuchadnezzar is humbled by the Almighty God with whom he continues to wrestle. His descent into madness like an animal will finally bring him to a point of confession and acceptance that there is no other God but Yahweh, the Lord. Let's listen now to the reading of God's Word. Nebuchadnezzar, ruler of the ancient world, conqueror of kingdoms, and slayer of kings, came in contact with the living God. He learned from the wisdom and favor of Daniel. He witnessed God protect Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. So the mighty king praised the Lord of heaven and earth. He sent a decree forth to the people of Babylon, saying, He is the Most High God. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Yet the mind of King Nebuchadnezzar was still fogged by years of pride and warmongering. He knew of God's mighty works, but had not yet come in contact with the personal reformation of his spirit. The king would soon learn the weight of God's power. It was late. The night was heavy upon the horizon. Clouds covered the stars above, and the east wind blew violently through the valley. Thunder rolled in from the distance, and the city was stirring beneath. King Nebuchadnezzar tossed and turned in his bed, tormented by yet another dream. He saw a tree sprouting forth from the earth. Its height was tremendous, and its trunk was strong. Its branches reached beyond the clouds for all the world to see. Its leaves were deep and beautiful green. Its fruit was abundant and provided food for all the lands below it. Animals found refuge in its shade, and the birds of the air made its nest in it. The king watched as the heavens opened up around it, and a voice boomed from the skies, saying, Chop the tree to the ground. Strip its leaves and scatter its fruit, but leave the stump and bind it with iron. Let it dwell with the beasts and become like them. So King Nebuchadnezzar watched as the mighty tree was sliced by the mighty hand of God, and its body fell to the earth, shaking it for miles. The king woke up in a terror. He was sweating and could not get the image of the tree's lifeless stump out of his mind. The king sent for his wisest counselor, Daniel. He described the dream in great length, leaving no detail out. Daniel listened intently to the king, growing more and more concerned with each detail, the king was frantic as he described the dream. Something in his mind had snapped, and it was clear what was about to happen. The king could sense the look of alarm on Daniel's face. Do not be frightened, the king said. Tell me what it means. I pray that this dream is for your enemies and not for you, Daniel said softly. However, that may not be the case. Daniel sat the king down and began to interpret its meaning for him. The mighty tree is you, my king. Your greatness has spread across the land. Your kingdom is the source of food and shelter for all on the earth. However, the stump is also you. You will be humbled, my king. You shall be driven to the wilderness because you have yet to learn of true humility. You have yet to understand that it is God who raises a king. Yes, you know of God now, but you still oppress and murder. You seek your own gain and you destroy all you desire. Turn from this, and there may be hope for you. King Nebuchadnezzar smiled at Daniel and sent him away. He feigned repentance. He feigned benevolence. However, the king continued to do all that seemed good in his eyes. He was consumed with self-worship. A year had passed, and the king was walking on the rooftops of his palace. 
The sun was peeking over the horizon and his entire country was painted with beautiful colors of gold and white. He breathed in the fresh air and said, Look at all I have built with my majesty. While the words were dancing out of the king's mouth, a voice fell upon him from heaven. Nebuchadnezzar, your kingdom shall be stripped from you. You shall dwell with the beasts until you truly know that it is the Most High who rules all kingdoms. And in that instant, a madness came upon the king. He writhed and panted like a dog, and his mind wandered into a place of true insanity. He ran like an animal into the wilderness and lived among the beasts. Over time, his hair grew long and his nails grew like claws. He ate grass like an ox and was greasy and wet with the filth of the earth. For seven years, Nebuchadnezzar was mad like an animal. His beastly demeanor revealed the sickness that had been in his heart all along. He was a beast of a king. He followed every debased desire that came into his heart. He murdered and stole. He raped and he pillaged. He was a beast long before the madness. Many years had passed, and Nebuchadnezzar was wandering the forest in the coolness of the morning. He was ravaging on plants and berries when the sun peered in through the treetops. The beast lifted his eyes towards the sun, and the warmth of God's mercy saturated him. His mind began to clear. He saw God for who he truly was, generous and marvelous. Nebuchadnezzar emerged from the wilderness, and his throne was restored to him. He now ruled with a clearer mind. His reason had returned to him, and he used his newfound wisdom to rule with humility. Today's scripture begins with a reminder of all God had already done to make himself known to King Nebuchadnezzar. The strength and wisdom of the young men like Daniel who served God, how God had protected the men in the furnace, even the king's own decree that the people would worship only the Lord. And yet, even with all of this, Nebuchadnezzar's heart was not where it should be. God ultimately does not look to our words or outward appearance of belief. He looks to the heart, straight to the heart. And Nebuchadnezzar's heart was still focused on his own interest and his personal glory. He was full of pride. So once more, we find the king disturbed with a dream. He saw a great tree that gave shade and food to all the animals. It stretched out far and wide, a majestic sight. But then God's voice came down from heaven, commanding the tree to be cut down. Its stump and roots bound to the ground where it would remain to live with animals and plants. But then God's voice came down from heaven, commanding that the tree be cut down, but its stump and roots bound to the ground where it would remain to live with the animals and plants. The dream clearly symbolized someone, and the king was greatly troubled. He first called his wise men and astrologers, but they had no answers. So he summoned Daniel, who received the interpretation from God. He told Nebuchadnezzar that the tree was the king himself. His vast empire was indeed majestic, providing for people the world over. But the king needed pruning. His lust for power and praise were clouding his vision. And though he had seen God work and even had some appearance of belief— Nebuchadnezzar had yet to acknowledge the supremacy of God and submit truly to him. Because of this, he would be driven away from society, forced to live like a wild animal. His mind would go mad, and his outward state would mimic his inward baseness. But God in his mercy would restore the kingdom to Nebuchadnezzar when he recognized God for who he was and humbled himself before him. The king heard the interpretation, but did not change his heart. One year later, as he was walking on the roof of his palace, filled with pride for his accomplishments, God's word came to pass just as Daniel said. The king was overtaken by madness, and for seven years he lived like a beast of the field, until finally he looked to the heavens and his sanity returned. God had broken this man, but this was not an act of cruelty. It was a work of grace, the reaching out of a loving God to bring this man to himself. Though he was not an Israelite, Nebuchadnezzar was created for the purposes of God, and it had always been God's heart for every person, including this man, to turn to him. Here we see our great God going to great lengths to reach one man. This man had such great power and influence that his life would have tremendous repercussions 
and echoes throughout all of history. Nebuchadnezzar testified to God's greatness, and in Daniel 4, 34, we read some of his words about the Lord. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. At last, the king had humbled himself before the Lord, and just as God had promised, the kingdom was restored to him. And the ripple effects of his transformation would be felt in the Babylonian kingdom and even beyond in the centuries to follow. Dear God, we are reminded in this story that you will go to great lengths to bring us to yourself. Lord, may we humble ourselves before you. And we pray that our lives would always reflect your love and grace. May we repent of our sin and submit to your will and live in the abundance of life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Let me encourage you to download the Pray.com app and make Bible study and prayer a real priority in your life. And if you are enjoying this podcast, share it with someone you know, someone you care about, because sharing God's Word has a powerful impact upon people's lives. And if you want more resources as to how you can find faith, grow in your faith, develop as a disciple and follower of Jesus, be sure to visit me at jackgraham.org. We have plenty of resources that will encourage you and equip you for life. God bless you.